You are Mr. Sweeney? Who, me? Why not O'Brien? What do you want to see him about? About business, I suppose. I suppose you'd call this a business. Well, what would you call it? I'd call it a criminal invasion of the rights of decent people. An assault upon the very privacy which is the cornerstone of self-respect. An infamous pursuit without shame or ethics. A vile calling masquerading in the cloak of respectability that actually sprung from the cesspools of humanity. Look, mister. Seepage of civilization. Does that answer your question? Look, mister, I'm the tailor from next door. I'm just here to eat my lunch. I mean, I was trying to eat my lunch and answer the telephone. A favor, that's all. With much of what you've got to say, and believe me, whatever you are doing, you're wasting your time. You should be in Congress. Confidentially, I agree. But what good is that going to do you? About a blue serge suit, my opinion is worth something. But from ethics... Then so where is the director of this enterprise? Here he is now, climbing. Tell him. Good day. Good day. at last to Mr. Sweeney, I and trust. And yours, Sir Alfred D. Carter. How I've looked forward to this moment, Sir Alfred. I was at your maiden concert in this country, your debut down there in Aeolian Hall. People said, what do you want to hear that limey for? What does he know about music? He takes an Italian or a Russian or a Dutchman to bring it out good. But something inside of me said, give the limey a chance. And I did. Did you? And am I glad I did? That hunch has paid off in golden dividends. I've never missed one of your concerts. Oh, within the metropolitan area, of course. I'm no millionaire, and I can't afford to travel around the country after you to South Dakota and places like that. Here's to the world's greatest living conductor. This is hardly what I came to see you about, Mr. The way you handle handle, Sir Alfred. For me, there's nobody handles handle like you handle handle. Really? There's you up here, and then there's nobody, no second, no third, maybe way down here, a Torah, a poor fourth. That is largely debatable. In any case, what I came to see you about... A hundred delirious, delirious. I usually have my tickets as soon as they're printed. A change in schedule loused me up a little, but I'll get in somehow. I'm bitterly sorry to hear that you're a music lover. I live for music. Without music, I would... I'd always hoped that music had a certain moral and antiseptic power, quite apart from its obvious engorgement of the senses, which elevated and purified his disciples, lifting them out of the power of professions like this infamy. Oh, Sir Alfred. So to spare me your compliments. The flattery of a foot pad is an insult in itself. Oh, you mean a flat foot, don't you, Sir Alfred? You don't mean a foot pad. I mean a foot pad. And now that I know that you like them, I shall probably cut Handel and Delius out of my oh. programs forever. Don't talk like that, Please Sir refrain Alfred. from mentioning any other of your musical favorites and poisoning those for me also. You're just hurt. I can see it. You read that report and naturally it upset you. Ah, uh, we fall for these little dames and try to believe they're in love with us. When every morning a shaving mirror yells, they can't be. Till one day we find out that youth belongs to youth, like you just done. And Take then... your hands off me. Oh, don't be sore at me. What have I got to do with it? I suppose it was me that went down to 3406 in the middle of the night, wearing only a negligee and stayed for 38 minutes. I suppose that's the part that bothered you. It usually is. 3406. Yeah, I think that was the number. I got it here someplace if you want it. There's only circumstantial evidence. Why don't we give her the benefit of the doubt? Maybe she couldn't open her toothpaste, and you was in England, so she goes down and gets this guy to do it for her. Or maybe she's seen a mouse in her room, and it upset her, and she wanted company. Uh, of course, that one's kind of thin. Oh, why don't we give her the benefit of the doubt anyway? Maybe she woke up out of a bad dream, and without thinking where she was going, slipped into a negligee, and... Are you presuming to discuss Lady de Casa, my wife? Well, you read it, didn't you? Oh, I thought that's why Hensher said he wanted... Holy Moses. Here, uh, sit down someplace. Is this the only copy? Uh, that's the original. You're a wise man. I've been through it. Only I wasn't as smart as you are. So I lost my piano and my savings and a little shack I had down at the beach and her. So what have I got now? Maybe I shouldn't be saying it. But if it was me, 
I'd never have him tailed. I'd never try to find out nothing. I'd just be grateful for whatever they was willing to give me. A year, a week, an hour. Tonight. Sir Alfred. 